All right, the first thing you'll need is Git so that Unity can pull the packages for the mod using the URLs that I'll show you from their wiki. Uh, so come to this URL to install, grab the appropriate version for your operating system, and uh, the defaults during the install are fine. So we will skip through this. Next thing we're gonna do is get Unity Hub. You're gonna click Download Unity Hub. Go ahead and open Unity Hub. You'll probably have to make an account. Once you're done, you can go to Installs and then install editor, archive, and download archive. All right, so we're gonna go to 2021, come down to 2021.3.5F1, click Unity Hub, and open. And pull it up here for us. We also wanna grab information from the wiki over here. All right and is there snap yeah here we go so per their wiki project setup instructions we want to tick off android build support open jdk android sdk and edk tools okay and then we'll scroll down to windows build support also good hit continue all right while that's installing we can go to mixamo and get a character just for an example mixamo the characters use that one uh, download FBX binary and typos all right so we'll come back to unity hub we see that our download is finished so we can go to projects a uh, new project and just following their instructions here Want to make a new 3D universal render pipeline project. You can either, and it's all templates or core, right? You want 3D universal render pipeline. Tutorial, not that. Create a project, and we'll skip ahead here. We have just jumped into this fresh 3D URP project, and we want to get rid of cameras and volumes following their instructions there I'm going to jump back to find out which packages we need to bring in so this is again the Mero SDK uh, project setup so if you're building for quest 2 you're gonna go file build settings Android switch platform right now I'm not doing that then we're also gonna go and add these packages and they do warn you here about um, Leaving or trailing spaces can call an error. I'll pull these over to the side here. So that I can just copy paste and go to Window Package Manager. All right, we're going to come up to Add Package from Git URL. We're going to copy and paste those three links I showed you before. Paste, add. Now, if you have an issue, like down here at the bottom, it shows you a red link saying that it can't do it when you copy paste that. It probably means that you installed Git and haven't restarted since then. Now that we've added all the packages, we're going to close out of here. Stress level zero, void tools. And we want to uh, validate narrow project settings. And then we want to come over here to fix all. Then we're going to click our cool button. Now we need to go up to stress level zero, void tools, asset warehouse. The way they describe this on the wiki is that each mod's its own project and that um, you'll have a single palette but then you'll have multiple crates and crates are things from spawnables or avatars or levels so you need to create a palette all right all right now we're going to bring our fbx in so we're going to go assets create new folder uh, I don't care, just call it Avatar. We're going to go to where we saved our model. Just drag that FBX in here. We'll click on here, you can see that we've got some material and texture problems. So you want to go to materials and change location to use external materials. You also want to go to rig. You want to change animation type to humanoid. Okay, now you can click apply.
apply. It's going to re-import it with those settings. Yes, we do want to fix this normal map. Okay, you can see that we've actually got our textures and materials sorted now. So we can drag character into the scene, zero out the position. And you can see that she's just like uniformly shiny. And that's a material issue on import. It defaults to that PBR workflow in the universal render pipeline. And um, just a smoothness of one, which is what gives you this Vaseline-y fake look. So what you can do, if it came from Mixamo, it's probably a specular workflow rather than a PBR workflow. Um, so you could leave it PBR and just only use that base map in your normal and just move this down. But that's just kind of dull looking. And if this is, you know, vinyl or leather and you want it to still have some sheen to it, her face is also going to have it. So I think this just looks better if we change it to specular. <clears throat> and you'll see that even here, you still get this face shine because you don't really have a a map you can use for smoothness here. But we do have a specular that we can pop that smoothness into. So rather than using the specular here, we could actually use the glossiness one just so we don't have use it universal shininess. Okay, now we want to make a prefab, so we'll go back to avatar folder, grab this game object and drag it down. We want to call it original prefab. Okay. Now we want to open the prefab and we want to add component. We want to add the avatar script. First thing we want to do is make sure that our marrow bone wrists Wrist left is left hand, wrist right is right hand, okay. If wrist left and wrist right don't auto populate here, you can go to the far left under your prefab, expand your skeleton, and drag those bones from your skeleton over to these fields. You could also go to the little circle to the right of the fields and look them up that way. Those are minimum there. We also are still getting that red sphere because we do not have a an eye override because we don't have eye bones. Eye bones or your or your eye override are going to be where your actual camera position is too, and it controls your your colliders as well um, vertically. So I can show you. We'll just add go here and create empty. We'll just call it eye override, okay. and we'll click back on the base and drag eye override to eye center override. You see our, our red sphere went away. All right, now you notice that you're, you don't see colliders here yet. And that's because we haven't positioned our eye override where it needs to be. So I'm gonna drag it up between the eyes. Drag it up between the eyes. I like that. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay, and we're going to click back on the parent, and now you can see that our colliders are showing up for us to be able to edit them. Um, another thing I want to do first is if you have separate meshes, see I've got several. Uh, your model may or may not, that's fine. Uh, if you do have separate ones for your head or your hair and stuff, things that you would want culled out of your view in first person, that's what these um, separate sections are for. So for body, I'm just going to leave my body. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to get rid of hair and face and eyelashes and eye. And then for head meshes, I'm going to come here. All right, I'm just going to drag. There's my face. Drag it to head mesh. And hair, I'm going to drag it to hair mesh. Eyeballs, they're going to go on head mesh. Eyelashes, head mesh. A quick note here, if you don't have separate head and hair meshes and they happen to be in your view in first person in the way, you can move that eye override forward out of your character's face past those things that are in your view in the way. Also down here in advanced settings, we already checked to make sure our hands at a minimum were set up. Uh, you can set up the rest of these bones too, but you don't have to. 
twist bones. If you have them, they'll be labeled as such. If you don't have them, don't worry about it. What they do is they keep geometry from folding over on itself as, as uh, other bones rotate. Okay, now we're going to come in here and click Edit Body. And we're going to adjust all of our colliders. Um, as I go by, I'm going to pull up this from, there, from the wiki. And this will show you where waist and high hip and under bust and all that kind of thing, where they expect it to be on vertically on your character here. So use that as a go by. For these, you can just push and pull them in to adjust this collider. Bring that jawline in. All right. Uh, yeah, back of the head's good. And then for these, you can actually move vertically or horizontally, and you can adjust how wide or skinny you want them to be. Okay, now I think if you had actual jiggly bit bones, you could come here and set them here. Um, we can still manipulate the uh, colliders for them. All right, now this one should be ready to go. So we'll go ahead and minimize that. We don't need to be editing anymore. We can go up here to stress level zero, void tools, asset warehouse. Here's the palette that we created earlier. And now we want to select that, come over here, add a crate. And we want to set it as an avatar crate. And for our asset reference, can actually come over here get our avatar we want to use this prefab one you see this is the prefab drag it into asset reference it'll auto populate that name you can change it we'll make it uh, avatar lady and create and then we want to expand this come down here to your avatar and hit generate packed asset. This will populate with a preview mesh you'll see here. And now we'll come over here and pack AV palette. Uh, yep, save. When it's finished packing, it'll pop up an explorer window to the directory it just built to. Go one level in, grab that folder, copy, and then go to your users, your username, app data, local low, stress level zero, bone lab, mods. Right. I'm going to just copy and paste over what I did. My older one, replace this. All right, now we can go test. We're going to verify that the mod is installed. Yep. There you go. AV pallet, that's what we put in there. I'm gonna go ahead. Alright, we will come over here, look for Avatar Lady, that's who we put in. Give a little preview, confirm. Alright. There we are, all rigged up.